Hey everybody, today I'm going to share with you seven great tools that will really up your productivity here in Dorico. These are simple things that will really speed up your note entry, your part formatting, and get you from composition to performance that much quicker. I've been using Dorico now for about six months, and I've been really enjoying how much quicker it is to get my music to publication level versus using Finale. So these are some really great ideas that will make everything go so much smoother for you. So here we go with my seven favorite tips in Dorico Pro. So the first tip here is how to enter a crescendo. Now I know that might seem silly, but we do this all the time. And if you were a Finale user, double clicking and dragging a crescendo was quite a drag. But here in Dorico, if you want to add a crescendo to a number of measures, all you need to do is highlight a series of notes and then hold down shift and push the greater than or less than sign. Greater than will give you a crescendo, less than, will give you a diminuendo. You can do this on multiple staves too. So if I highlight four staves at once and hit crescendo, bam, it'll throw it in there. Another nice feature to this is it will not overwrite your dynamics. Um, and so it'll actually combine the crescendo with the marked mezzo forte piano or whatever that you have. And it'll stop the crescendo when it comes to a terminating dynamic. So this is a really fast tool. Again, shift greater than, less than, That'll get you a crescendo. So our next tip is adding one of those ties that goes out into the distance past the end of our note. This is something that's kind of hard to find in Dorico, but it is under the Properties panel. So if we go down to the Properties panel and we highlight a note, we can go down here to this LV tie. And this is the French word for a tie that goes out into nowhere. And you can see it adds the small tie floating off the end of my note there. And it'll work for any pitch for any reason. So if you want to have a ringing indicator on any note, you can click on it and add that to it. It's kind of hard to find, especially if you're not used to, used to using the French term for it. So that's how you find that in Dorico. Tip three is making use of your keyboard shortcuts, specifically custom shortcuts. Let's say there's a tool you've been using a lot in Dorico, but you keep forgetting where it is in the menu and you just want quick access to it. Well, Dorico gives you a great way of creating your own custom shortcuts. What you're going to do is you're going to go under the Preferences, which on a Mac is under the Menu item of Dorico, and then you're going to go down to Key Commands. From here, you can go into the search bar, and let's say you want to make one for Reduce. So you start typing in the command you're looking for, and it will show you the overarching menu where it is found, and then it'll find the command. From here, what you're going to do is you're going to click on Press Shortcut, and that's going to allow you to start entering key commands to see if any of them are taken. So let's say I hit the R key, and you'll see that it says, uh-oh, this key sequence is also assigned to another command. I better choose a different one. And so what I can do then is I can pick a custom set of modifiers and look at that. It found no conflicts, so I can hit add command and then apply. And now if I was to highlight these two systems here, hit copy, then I was to highlight this part of the trumpet part and I was to hit my hot key for reduce. There it pastes in the music right where I need it. And so that's a great way of making custom shortcuts to up your workflow in Dorico. Another great workaround in Dorico is if you're mixing together regular notation and rhythmic notation and you want to get rid of the extra rests it always seems to add, a great way of doing this is using the Properties panel, which is down here on the bottom of your screen. And if you were to click on this note here and say you don't want to see any more rests past that, because you can see there are rests in that bar. What I can do here is I can go down to this start and end voice. And if I hit end voice on that note, you'll see that it takes away the notes, because that is where we're saying on this note, I don't want to see any more of that voice, because that's why there's extra rests. So if I go down and I click on this note here, and I hit start voice, you can see it takes away the rest. Now, be careful when you're using this feature. If you used a voice previously and you didn't use the end command, 
Sometimes it won't let you do this because you have to go to the previous instance of that voice and end it at that point so that you can start it again in a new place. And this is a way of hiding those extra rests that you don't need to see in Dorico. While we're in the Properties panel, another great tip in Dorico is to bracket notes, like if you're going to ghost them. And again, that's under Properties, and it's called Bracketed Note Heads. And there it is down there in the menu. You'll just select a note, and you can hit Bracket Style, Round or Square, and then it will add that bracket to your note. And if you would want to highlight, say, all the notes in a passage, you can go ahead and bracket several notes at a time. So you don't have to just do one part or one note at a time, you can actually do multiples if you select them. Another great tip here is if you're trying to make your playback match the way you want the performers to play, you can actually tell Dorico to not play your music the first, second, third, whatever you would like in the playback. So here at 25, I have a repeat sign, and maybe I don't want these notes to play back the first time. So if I highlight these parts here, and I go under the Properties panel, you can see Suspend Playback, there's Always, meaning you'll never hear it, or On Passes, and then under it, you click on Suppress On Pass, and if I put 1 here, that means when Dorico comes to this repeat section, it will not play those notes the first time. The nice thing about this is you can see that it grays the notes out to let you know that the playback of these notes have been altered. And that's a great way of visually knowing that something might need to be changed back if you no longer want that feature here in Dorico. Another quick tip on Dorico, have you ever gotten to the end of your music and wondered why the last line of the music gets stretched out or is condensed down? Well, that's under the Layout tab here in Dorico. So let's say in this guitar part, the last three bars were their own system here on this part, and you can see that it's not stretched to the end. Now, some people like this where the you have that little orphaned system, but some people find that to be distracting. So to alter that, what we're going to do is we're going to go under Library, and we're going to go down to our Layout Options, and then we're going to go down under Note Spacing, and there you'll see only justify final system in flow when it is more than 50% full. And as you can see in my part there, mine is less than 50% full, so it did the smaller one. So I can uncheck this, and you'll see that it went ahead and it spread that bar out, or I could up the number, say, to um, 40%, and then we'll see that I'm still within my margin, but maybe I change that to 30%, and there it will stretch it out. So you can make this a customizable thing where you can have it be shorter if you want, or if you want to take it away, you can go ahead and uncheck that option. The final tip I want to show you today is about exporting your parts. Once you get everything looking good and you go to the print menu, let's say you're looking to export an entire document, but you want to have the file names look good too, so that it doesn't make a big jumble on your hard drive. So if you highlight a number of parts over here on the Layouts tab, we can go under Graphics, and then we can go down here to where it says File Name Options. And then from here, you can see it previews the way that the file names will be written, and then you have all of these predefined um, tokens you can use to go ahead and generate a file name. So what you can see is I have F for project file name, followed by N, which is the layout number, followed by L, which is the layout name. So I do this so that all of these files will be listed together in a group because they're all listed by an identical file name. Then they're going to be score order by that number and then you'll have the name next to it so you can identify it. And I find this to be a really great formula so that it's really easy to find your files. They'll be listed in score order, so if you go to print them, when they come out of the printer, they'll be in score order. And on top of that, when you put them into a, a note reading software like Fourscore, it's much easier to find all of the parts. 
Now, do note if you have changed around the order of your parts and your score, you may need to renumber those layouts. And that's our last tip for today, which is under the setup menu, you can go over here and you can right click on the layouts and you can hit um, renumber layouts, which will reorder your layouts so that those numbers that are generated when we are exporting as PDFs will now be in score order again. So thanks so much for watching this tips video. I hope you'll find them very helpful. Check out my plethora of other Dorico videos on the channel here. Um, I love to help people out and I look forward to talking to you next time. Thanks so much for watching.